Hey guys, my name is Tom, and welcome back to another devlog. In this one, I balanced some colors, fixed a few issues, and finally got to work on setting up a master server. Over the weekend, I did a bit of color balancing, which mainly consisted of reducing the saturation of the colors I've been using. Yesterday was pretty busy for me, so I just continued that work. I did this because previously everything was so bright that I could barely enable the bloom and post exposure effects because they affected literally everything. When the sun was directly overhead, the water would turn bright turquoise, which just looked wrong. The most notable changes are probably the water in the skybox, where I turned down the brightness of the horizon so it no longer glows as intensely. Additionally, I had noticed that my skybox's sun didn't seem to be affected by bloom, at least not nearly as much as when I used Unity's built-in skybox shader. After looking through Unity's shader code for a bit, I noticed that they were multiplying the sun's color by 15. At first this didn't make any sense, but then I realized what should have been obvious. The brighter a color is, the more it's affected by bloom, which means that HDR colors will be affected more. I knew that HDR essentially allowed color values to extend outside the normal range, which is between 0 and 1 for the red, green, and blue channels. However, I'd never really put two and two together to realize that HDR quite literally means that the color values are going outside that range. On my screen, my skybox and Unity's skybox seemed to both display the sun as pure white, at least when it was directly overhead. What I didn't think about is that even though they look identical, my sun's color channels were still within that 0 to 1 range, while Unity's was in a 0 to 15 range. Once I multiplied my own sun color by 15, it worked with bloom pretty nicely, despite not really looking any brighter. However, this unfortunately affected the horizon fog at sunrise and sunset so that it no longer seems to obscure the sun, which I'm not too happy about. That's the issue that I've sort of been working on today. The way the horizon fog worked was that I simply calculated a gradient mask with values between 0 and 1, starting at the horizon and going upwards. Then I could simply multiply that by the shape of the sun, and the sun would appear to sink into the fog. The problem is that now that the sun color is no longer in the 0 to 1 range, multiplying 15 by 0 0.5 for example will still be outside that range, meaning that the sun appears just as visible as before. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to fix this, or if I even can fix it without losing the bloom effect, but I'll have to keep messing around with that. So yesterday, and for most of today, I've been working on the next part of the networking series, but this evening I decided to revisit the issue I was having in the last devlog related to taking screenshots. I'm honestly in complete disbelief right now because I managed to find a solution, and it's so utterly simple. I don't know how I didn't think of this earlier, but I realized I could set a specific resolution for my game window in the Unity editor without actually resizing it. This is literally exactly what I was trying to do through code a week ago, and I don't understand how this solution managed to evade me. I'll have to fix up my screenshot code though since I left it in a bit of a destroyed state, but that shouldn't take long. Half an hour later, and I can take screenshots again at pretty much any resolution I like, and they include post-processing effects. The only reason it even took that long was because the screenshot code was even more of a mess than I thought, so I had to restore it to a state where it actually worked, and then I cleaned it up a bunch. I'm glad this is taken care of, but I'm still trying to accept that the solution was directly under my nose and I didn't see it. Every time I run into an issue that I get really stuck on, the fix is so unbelievably simple. I guess that's because the small things are a lot easier to miss. It's Tuesday morning right now, and yesterday I did a bit of reading about references in Visual Studio, and I spent some time thinking about what exactly the main thing is that I want to accomplish in this devlog. In the interest of trying to hit the goal which I set for my progress on this game in my goals for 2020 video, which was to have a playable version by the end of March, I'm going to work on setting up a master server. Before anyone gets the wrong idea, having a playable version doesn't mean there's going to be any sort of alpha or beta testing going on right away. My main goal here is to put the necessary functionality in place to allow me to easily distribute the game when that time comes. For the foreseeable future, I'll only be using this to test things with a few friends. I'm not sure when I'll start quote unquote official testing since there's currently a pretty massive lack of content in the game. You can shoot cannonballs at other ships and that's kind of it. However, if you're interested in being part of early testing when that does eventually happen, make sure you're part of the community on Discord. There's an invite link in the description. Basically, I want clients to initially connect to this master server which would probably handle any authentication stuff before connecting them to a game server. If I decide to add any sort of matchmaking criteria in the future, the master server would also be the one dealing with that. It's 8 o'clock now, and I've spent quite a bit of time trying to figure out how to go about setting up the master server. I'd like to pull the network code out of the game server project and separate it in a way where I can use it for both the master and game servers. 
While doing some research about the best way of going about this, I realized that my server is targeting .NET Framework, while the server for my networking tutorial series targets .NET Core. I've never really been clear on what the differences are, so I got a bit distracted and started looking into that. From what I can tell, unless you need some functionality that only .NET Framework supports, which I don't think I do, targeting .NET Core is the way to go for servers, as it's a bit more efficient. So, I think I'm going to switch the project to target .NET Core. I have no idea how long this will take, but I'm a bit annoyed since I wanted to at least have the network code separated today. Then I could have set up the master server tomorrow and spent Thursday tying up some loose ends, but now I'm not sure if I'll get around to that. It's currently 10.40 on Wednesday evening, and although today was a busy day, I managed to make some progress. Last night I finished switching the server project to target.net core, so this morning I got to work on extracting the network code so I can reuse it for the master server. I've successfully done so, which means that the network code is pretty much a plug and play networking solution now. When I start working on the master server tomorrow, I should be able to just reference the project with the network code and call the server class's start method. Of course I'll have to manually set up the packets that need to be sent back and forth, because those are specific to each server's purpose, so unfortunately I couldn't just pull those out and make them work with all servers. I might also have to pull out the client project's network code so I can reuse it for inter-server communication, but we'll see how far I get with this tomorrow. It's 1.30 on Friday now, and I just finished setting up a basic master server. And when I say basic, it really is as bare bones as I could make it. I was hoping to get this all done yesterday, but as usual everything took longer than I expected. On top of that, I ran into a few issues that were caused by some minor oversights on my part, which didn't help in getting this done. Anyways, clients now connect to the master server, which currently just sends them the port of the game server, and then the client disconnects and connects to that port. I haven't set up inter-server communication or anything, as that would require me to pull out the client code and combine it with the server code, which might be a bit of a process since the client code is sitting inside Unity. Additionally, I don't want to include the server code in the client project, so I still need to maintain that separation somehow. Once servers are able to talk to each other, I'll be able to have game servers connect to the master server when they start up, which means the master server will know which game servers are running at any given moment. I'll also be able to dynamically connect clients to game servers and add matchmaking if I decide that's necessary. On a bit of a different note, I just wanted to give you guys a heads up, I'll be going away for two weeks next Thursday, which means that the next devlog will be delayed a bit. I'll try to put together an extra video next week before I leave, so that I only miss one upload while I'm gone. Hopefully that'll help me avoid, or at least minimize, the wrath of the YouTube algorithm. Speaking of the YouTube algorithm, you've already helped me out greatly by watching this far into the video, so thank you. However, if you'd like to go above and beyond in helping my channel grow, make sure to smash the like button and leave your thoughts in the comments below. Also, if you'd like to join me on the rest of this journey of developing a multiplayer game, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're always notified when I upload another video. With that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again next time.